What's up guys? Today, we're gonna talk about pre-screening videos. Ready, set, go. Start by grabbing the instruments, towels, camera, tripod, and anything else you'll need for the session out of the storage closet. Next, clear your recording space and move all of the gear as far away from it as possible. Make sure to cover any large resonant instruments because any residual resonance is going to negatively impact your recording. It's also a good idea to remove any cymbals and toms, place them on the floor, and cover those up for the same reason. If there's room, put as much gear as you can in the closet. The more open space there is in the room, the better your recordings will sound. Next, grab your instrument and place it no less than 8 feet from the back wall and centered in the room horizontally. Grab the trap table and audio interface we use for lessons, place it somewhere in front of your setup, plug in the interface, and turn it on. On the front of the interface, be sure that 48 volt phantom power is turned on because you won't be able to record without it. Next, we need to set up the microphones. Grab the microphone stand with the DPAs on it and carefully center them on your setup, approximately 8 feet from the instrument. If they aren't already, plug the leftmost microphone into input 1 on the front of the interface and the rightmost microphone into input 2. Next, grab your laptop and charger, plug in the charger and the USB connection. If your computer uses USB-C, you'll need an adapter for this. Next, we need to set up the DAW. I use Adobe Audition, but if you're using Audacity, the steps are similar. Once you've got Audition open, go to File, New, Multitrack Session. Name your session and be sure that you're recording with a sample rate of 48 and bit depth of 24. Click OK. Now come up to Edit, Preferences, Audio Hardware. And be sure that the input is the PreSonus 68 and the output is either built in or headphones. Make sure the sample rate here is also 48 and click OK. Now we need to assign the microphones to separate tracks. In track 1, Click on Default Stereo Output and select Mono Mic Instrument Line 1. In Track 2, select Mono Mic 2. To arm or activate the mics for recording, click on the R in the top right corner of each track. Walk over to the mics and as you tap the left mic, you should see your audio meter moving up and down in Track 1 and vice versa with the right mic in track 2. Using the panning slider, pan track 2 all the way to the right and mic 1 all the way to the left. Now we need to set our input levels, which is the microphone's sensitivity to sound coming in. To do this, hit record, walk over to your instrument, and play the loudest part you plan to record. If you see a red bar at the top of your audio meter, turn the input level for that mic down using the preamps on the physical audio interface. Repeat this process until the loudest part you plan to record sits somewhere between negative 9 and negative 6 decibels. Now that the audio is good to go, let's set up the video gear. Take the tripod out of the case, extend it to where the camera will sit around eye level, and lock the joints. Loosen the black tension knob, hold down the red button, and remove the quick release plate. Line up the plate and camera as follows, twist the screw into the camera, and use a key to tighten it the rest of the way. Remove the camera sensor cap and the lens mount cap. Line up the dots on the camera and the lens to insert the lens, twist until you hear it snap into place, and remove the lens cap. Coming back to the tripod, hold down the red button again to reattach the quick release plate and tighten the black knob to secure it. Turn the camera on and move it around to find the shot you want, which by the way does not have to be front and center, but should be in front and not from the sides or above. Now before digging into any camera settings, take a quick screenshot of this for easy reference. Once you're familiar with these, make sure your shutter speed is set to 125, aperture to 1.4 if you're using the Sigma lens, or 3.5 on the Sony. If the Sony doesn't go down to 3.5, use the zoom wheel on the lens to zoom all the way out. If you're using the Sigma lens, your ISO is going to be somewhere between 160 and 200, and with the Sony lens, somewhere around 2000. Just move it around until you feel like it's properly exposed. Using the function menu, double check to ensure that picture profile 1 is selected. 
To fine tune your focus, be sure that the AF-MF lever is turned to the up position. This allows you to easily switch between manual and auto focus using the button in the center. If you're not sure, tap around on the screen and if you see the image refocusing, then you're definitely in autofocus. You can also test this by adjusting the focus wheel on the physical lens. If the focus wheel is affecting the image whatsoever, you're in manual focus. You'll want to be in manual focus for these videos, because using autofocus, you risk the camera focusing on something that you may not want it to. Once you know that you're in manual focus, use the trash button on the bottom right hand side of the camera and the ISO wheel. Zoom all the way in and adjust the focus using the focus wheel until it's just right. Now zoom back out, hit record, and walk over and play for about 10 seconds. Sometimes what you see on the camera and what you'll see in the computer are not 100% the same. So, to double check, take the SD card out of the camera and throw it into your computer. If your computer doesn't have an SD card reader, you'll need to purchase an adapter, which I'll put links to in the description. Once you've confirmed that both the audio and video sound and look great, hit record on both your laptop and the camera, stand where you'll be when you start recording, clap three times loudly, and you're ready to start recording. Once you're finished recording, be sure to save the session, upload the video files to your computer, and you're ready to begin the editing process. Once you're in the editing room, open your audition file and come up to File, Multitrack Mixdown, Entire Session. Make sure you're exporting with the same settings you recorded and click OK. Next, open up Premiere Pro, start a new project, and drag your pre-screening video into your timeline with your audio directly under it. To line up your video with your audio, start by highlighting both, right-clicking, and selecting Synchronize. If this doesn't work, simply drag one of them until they're pretty close, right-click on the title within the timeline panel, and select Show Audio Time Units. This will allow you to zoom in much closer and be much more accurate in lining them up. Once they're lined up, use the slash key to zoom all the way out and begin cutting off the negative space at the beginning and ends of your video and audio. To add a fade in and fade out, start by coming to your effect controls panel and finding opacity. Drag the cursor in your timeline to where you want the fade out to begin and click the timer next to opacity. Then drag the cursor to the end of your timeline, click and drag the value next to opacity down to 0%. Now, highlight both of those keyframes, copy, drag the cursor to the beginning of your timeline, paste, and simply reverse them manually. Give it a quick look to make sure everything checks out and you're ready to export. Come up to File, Export, Media. Make sure that the format is H.264 and preset is Match Source High Bit Rate. Smash Export and you're good to go. All right, so it sounds like a lot, but listen, if you have trouble setting any of this stuff up, just shoot me a text message, give me a call, ask one of the folks who's more experienced with pre-screening recordings, and we'll get you taken care of. Till next time, happy recording.